Between the nod, 9.39 ERA in the first inning this year. He's also had problems against Mike Piazza, Dave. Look at this July 18th. Well, Piazza is staying back pretty well on that one. He has three homers this year against Green. Lately, Piazza's been on fire, hitting 519 during the hitting streak. So that was July 18th. This is tonight. That's not tonight. This is tonight. <laughs> it's a night game, after all. Piazza with two men on, and there it goes. 30th home run. He's now got 100 RBIs. The Mets score five in the first. His parents love it. Piazza, of course, grew up in Philadelphia. Al Leiter cruising. Bobby Esalea, down he goes. Desi Relliford, down he goes. The pitcher, Tyler Green, down he goes. It's 7-5 Mets as we go to the ninth. Scott Rowland against John Franco. And Rowland's going to chop one to third. Franco over to the third base side of the mound, makes the play, and the Mets go on to win by the final score of 7-5. to five. So Piazza now has 30 homers and 100 RBIs. He went two for four. Great presence of mind by Franco. Look, as Sosa returns to Wrigley Field, standing ovation prior to his first at bat. Lance Johnson's on second. Sosa, could it be? Deep to left center, but not deep enough. Watch the replay. Sosa thought it was gone. You know he thought it was gone because he gave it a little skip, but it didn't go over the wall. Bottom of the third now, Dave. Well, one of the things Sammy has done is improve his plate discipline this year. That's one of the reasons he has 58 homers. He lays off Jose Sink Silva's sinker, falls off a fastball. Silva drops a nasty hook on it, but then Sammy goes to work, lays off the sinker, fouls off a tough hook. He used to strike out on both of those pitches, the low hook and the high fastball. He took them both to set it up for Mark Gray. A guy who's hit over 400 with a bases loaded lifetime. Make that 411 lifetime as he drives in a pair with a key single to center field. Made three nothing Chicago. Now Sosa making a nifty effort here in foul territory to make the catch. Top of the eighth. 5-2 Cubs run on first. Kevin Tappany to Kevin Young. Smash a third. Gary Gaetti starting the five, four, three, double play. In the top of the ninth. Rod Beck coming in to close it. He's got two out. Tim Laker to second. Mickey Morandini, normally reliable. I got it, I got it, I got it. Now this brings a tying run to the plate. Pirates with two on, down three. Tony Womack lines out. Gaetti makes the grab, and the Cubs win it by the final score of 5-2. Sosa goes 0-2 for 2 with a pair of walks. He hasn't homered in five games. Kevin Tappany now 5-0 in his career against Pittsburgh. Is Simlinger. And Big Mac, down he goes. Top of the third now, Dave. Well, Remlinger, he has very, very good stuff. He's just inconsistent. He was a former number one draft choice out of Dartmouth. He gets Big Mac on the low slider that time. Top of the fifth. Cards down 4-3. Mac up again against Remlinger, and he draws the walk. Next runner, Brian Jordan, he walked him. Remlinger walked six, struck out nine. Kind of a typical Remlinger game. Scott Sullivan walks. Ron Gant loads the bases for Fernando Tatis. Gets through. That scores two, and the cards go up five to four. Same inning, J.D. Drew last night in his Major League. Second game of his Major League career had a home run for his first Major League hit, and there he drives in two. That makes it eight to four. Bottom of the fifth now, Rich Prosher has walked the bases loaded. The two teams combined for 20 walks in the game. Prosher walks another man. Course is in a run. Reds pulled it with an 8-5. that would score two more in the fifth, making it 8-7. Tony La Russa, let's get the ball over the plate. 8-7 cards, last chance for McGuire to hit 63 against Gabe White. And McGuire... It's a massive pop out. So, Cards win 8 7. McGuire goes 0 for 3 with two walks. He's now drawn 151 walks, tying Barry Bonds for the National League record for most Carl. And Bell will double the right. Two runs come in to score, and the Astros go up by the score of 2 to nothing. Sometimes you have to take the bad with the good when you have Derek Bell. He's an enormous talent, but sometimes he gets a little spacey on the base pass and in the field. Marquise Grissom hits a fly ball to right with a man on first base. Derek grabs it. Very nice of Derek. Throw the ball up in the stands, a souvenir. Uh, Cirillo going down. Now he's going to run around the bases. Craig Biggio can't believe it. He's got the glove in his head. Why is that? Maybe uh, Derek Bell. Let's see. There's one out. Derek. Derek! There's one out! 
Well, when you're going good, you get away with things like that. Sorrell laughing, and <laughs> Pete Incavillia says, Derek, uh, put a rock in your pocket, pal. Now, there are two outs here in the top of the eighth. Mark Loretta to right. Bell makes a catch. It is now okay to throw the ball into the stands. And the no-look effort into the stands. As Houston wins it by the final score of 7-1, to one. Shane Reynolds striking out 12 to top. Really been struggling. 1-3, and 7.50 oh, in his last four starts. He's in an immediate jam in the first. First and third, nobody out. Three and two. As a runner, you never get picked off in that situation. You've got to make him throw it to the plate. Sean Green, a pretty smart player, made a boo-boo there. And that made it one out and starting to blunt a big rally. Jose Canseco out on that 3-2 pitch. And then Pettit gets out of that inning on skate. In the bottom of the third, the Yankees down 5-3. Daryl Strawberry, high fly to right center. Jose Cruz, Sean Green, I got it, you got it, who's got it? Uh, no one's got it. Ball drops, Bernie Williams scores. So the Yanks are now down one. Next man up, Ricky Lede, the left, goes the other way. Ground rule double. Tino Martinez scores, ties it at five. The Yanks then would add two more in the inning. Well, Pettit settled down after the five-run inning, allowed a four-pitch walk, and then he comes back to get a ground ball by Tony Fernandez to Scott Brocious. A nice 5-3 double play that builds the Yankees out two nights in a row. It helped last night in Boston as well. So the Yanks win at 8-5 after winning 11 in a row. Toronto on the hill for Mazzoni and Cox. Brad Fulmer to first. Andres Galarraga drops it. Millwood comes over, picks up the ball. Did he make the play? Yes, he did. And then Great job there. Top of the third, 2-1 Braves. Javi Lopez, 33rd home run of the year. 5-1 Atlanta, three-run shot. Lopez now has 101 runs batted in. Bottom four, Lopez calling for the fastball. Millwood, high fastball. And he gets him swinging. Bottom of the ninth, Atlanta up 7-4. Mike Mordecai, the center. Andrew Jones with a catch. Atlanta wins at 7-4. So just a brave third win in their last 11. Millwood goes six and two thirds. He's the ball A joiner. Taking off for second. Charles Johnson throws through. Greg Vaughn steals home. First pirate to steal home since Joe Clark in September of 92. Top of the fourth. Kevin Brown perfect through three. Uses the reflex to rob Eric Young. Next man up. Still in the top of the fourth. Trinidad Hubbard is the batter. Down he goes. Brown perfect through six innings. Top of the seventh. First man up. Eric Young will hit the chopper to third. George Arias throws the ball away, charged with an error. So the perfect game here is gone in the seventh. After an Eric Harris infield single broke up the no hitter, Bobby Bonilla. Long drive. It turns out to be a single off the scoreboard. Two runs scored. Dodgers down by the score of three to two. Four batters later, runners on second and third. Mark Wuzelanek off the glove of Andy Sheets. Two runs come in to score, so the Dodgers up 4-3 after Brown had been perfect through six. Bottom seven, 4-3 Dodgers. Chan Hope Park strikes out areas with the bases loaded. He struck out 10 in seven innings. Gave up three runs, but did walk seven. Top of the ninth, Chris Gomez at short. Makes a great diving stop, gets up and throws out Carroll. Now Jeff Shaw to come on and close it out. Yeah, one thing you sometimes face in September in the playoffs, wherever you play, are shadows. And that almost always favors the pitcher. Jeff Shaw comes on, Greg Vaughn, high slider, maybe a cutter. He couldn't catch up with it. Wally Joyner can't make contact on an outside fastball. John Vanderwall can't catch up with a high gas. Seven of the final nine Padres, once that shadow came over, were retired on strikes. Daryl Kyle with the play at first. Out or safe. Look at it again. Todd Helton with the stretch at first. Appears to have it before Castillo steps on first, but Mark Hirschbeck calls him safe for the Marlins' first hit. Two out now in the third. Todd Dunwoody. Down he goes. Bottom of the fourth. Dante Bichette, third in the National League in hitting. Leading off. Don't expect him to do that. But he'll take it. Extends his hitting streak to 12 games. Bottom of the four, still no score. Roberto Clemente's nephew, Edgar Clemente, playing for the resting Larry Walker. Single to left for his first major league hit. Bichette scores from second. Todd Helton's going to third. Todd Helton's not going to get to third. Clemente. We'll go one for two with a walk and an RBI in his major league debut.
Well, Daryl Kyle was on fire today. He had a lot of trouble at Coors Field in the first half of the year, but certainly not today. Brian Daubach, Kevin Laurie, Ori looking. We talked about Mike Piazza having good balance. Not so for Clifford Floyd. Kyle giving up one tainted hit through eight innings. Now it's Bichette, 21st homer of the year. 2-0 in favor of Colorado. Top of the ninth, rocks up three zip. Todd Dunwoody's at the plate. And Dunwoody drills it. Over the head of Daryl Hamilton. That would be a triple, and he would eventually score the only run of the game for the Marlins. Colorado wins it three to one. Kyle.